The latest reports on China's COVID situation are not ringing any festive bells, but rather blaring an emergency siren. China's abrupt lifting of its COVID curbs could cost the country dearly. The sudden easing off of the restrictions could lead China into 2023 with one million COVID deaths. This is according to new projections made by the US-based Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation. So far, a total of 5,235 deaths have been reported from China after the active pandemic season, which comes as a surprise considering China's almost hypochondriac outlook towards its COVID situation compared to countries that have been hit far worse by the pandemic. While the U.S. reported a total of 1.1 million deaths and Brazil 690,000 with other countries reporting similarly high numbers, China's death count of 5,235 makes its zero COVID policy feel pretty efficient. Though China's punctuality in reporting its COVID-related death cases has been questioned on multiple occasions. There are fears that as Beijing witnesses an easing of COVID curbs, it might be headed for a surge in its casualty numbers. As it was only a few days ago and some images showed China's alarming situation on the ground, people could be seen inside a stadium in Beijing waiting in the stands while blue tents were set up to serve as makeshift clinics. Empty shelves in pharmacies across Beijing suggested the seriousness of the lack of preparedness on China's part, with the elderly still remaining unvaccinated in many cases. The prediction of one million deaths by the latest COVID model could well turn into a reality. As of 14th December, China reported 2,000 new COVID-19 infections compared with almost 2,300 a day earlier. For more on this, we're now joined by Dr. Amish Dalia, a senior scholar at the Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. Thanks very much for speaking to Vion. Now, in recent days, since the easing of the COVID curbs in China, we've seen these horrifying images of people queuing up inside a Beijing stadium to seek treatment, people receiving IV fluids on streets outside fever clinics. Now, this U.S.-based institute of health metrics and evaluation says China could see 1 million COVID deaths in 2023. Do you believe the situation in China is as alarming as these projections seem to indicate? You have to remember that what you're seeing there is a model and those are projections that have assumptions built into them. So they may, they're, they're not necessarily going to be uh, a crystal ball, but what they do tell you is that if China doesn't take the appropriate actions, there could be a massive amount of death. And the appropriate actions have always been in China's hands. They can start to use Western vaccines to vaccinate their high-risk population. They can start to use drugs like Paxlovid. They can expand ICU capacity. They failed to do that. And now they put themselves in this situation, but it can change if they actually take the appropriate actions and use those, te those medical countermeasures as well as smart public health measures. You don't have to force people into quarantine camps to get people to quarantine. You can allow them to quarantine at home without welding them in their in their houses. You can do less draconian targeted public health along with medical countermeasures and avoid the most dire projections. All right, so the most dire projections can still be avoided. Now, fact is, China's zero COVID policy backfired on multiple fronts. We saw unprecedented protests in that country. The economy took a massive hit. Now, with the sudden easing of the COVID curbs, do you think there's a real danger that China's healthcare infrastructure could get overwhelmed? And where do you think China went so horribly wrong? I do think that some of their health infrastructure will be overwhelmed. What China has is a very uh, diverse amount of healthcare facilities. So in certain parts of the country, they have very well-equipped hospitals, like in Beijing, for example, or Shanghai. But in other places in China, they have very poor healthcare infrastructure. So those rural areas where they don't have hospitals or doctors or ICU beds, they are going to get overwhelmed. And hopefully they'll be able to load balance if they need to and move some of those patients to other provinces where there is more healthcare facilities. Uh, China went wrong because they defied the actual biology of this virus. This was a virus that was never going to be eradicated or eliminated, was always going to become endemic. Everyone was going to get infected at some point or another. And what they didn't do is use high potency vaccines from Moderna, from Pfizer BioNTech, from Novavax, from AstraZeneca, from uh, uh, from Johnson and Johnson. They used their own vaccines and refused to import or even do any deals with any of the other uh, vaccine manufacturers. And now they're left with a population 
that is vaccinated with the poor vaccine and their elderly population is under vaccinated, even with the, their own Chinese vaccines. So they messaged this very, very wrong and didn't protect their high risk groups and relied again on this COVID zero strategy, which had been held onto for so long, not because of science, but because of political reasons, because their, their head of state has now made this kind of made it his signature policy and they saw it as some kind of capitulation to move from it. And uh, it, it really defies all reality why they, they clung to this for so long and didn't take the requisite actions. Well, clearly, China's vaccination strategy leaves a lot to be desired, but let's certainly hope that those alarming projections do not come true. Dr. R Amesha Adalia, thanks so much for speaking to Vion. Thank you.